A French military task force with a festive name, Champagne, is wrapping up a mission that's no party, training a whole new brigade of several thousand Ukrainian troops who will be joining the fight against Russia's invasion armed with France-supplied tanks, artillery cannons and other heavy weaponry. The approaching return to Ukraine of the and of Kiev Brigade, after more than two months of intense military training in eastern and southern France, comes at another critical juncture in the almost three-year war. Russian forces are driving westward in an effort to capture all of Ukraine's eastern Donbass region. They've been bolstered by up to 12,000 North Korean troops that have been deployed to Russia's Kursk border region to help beat back Ukrainian forces there, according to U.S., South Korean and Ukrainian intelligence assessments. The re-election of Donald Trump is also keeping Ukraine and its allies guessing about the impact he'll have as U.S. president on the war's future trajectory, following his campaign pledges to swiftly end the fighting and suggestions that Kiev should cede territory to Moscow in return for peace. When deployed, the French-trained and equipped brigade named after a Kiev princess who became a queen of France could prove to be a formidable force on the battlefields. It will eventually be made up of 4,500 troops, formed of infantry battalions, plus engineers, artillery teams and other specialists, French authorities have previously said. The more than 2,000 soldiers who have been training in France are being put through final paces before their return to Ukraine. The majority of them were recently mobilized and previously had just a few weeks of basic training before their arrival in France in September, the French military says. The Ukrainian military is also training other troops for the brigade back in Ukraine, according to French authorities. The French military dedicated around 1,500 of its own soldiers to the Champagne task force that has been teaching the Ukrainians how to fight effectively together and how to use and maintain their France-supplied weaponry. The French military says the brigade's arsenal will include 18 AMX-10 light tanks, 18 truck-mounted Caesar artillery pieces, 128 armored troop carriers, anti-tank and anti-aircraft missile systems, plus other weaponry and equipment. With observation drones buzzing overhead and amid clouds of smoke and bursts of gunfire and explosions, the Ukrainian soldiers conducted exercises this week at a French military training camp, showing how they have learned to defend and storm a complex of trenches like those on the battlefronts in Ukraine. The French military wouldn't allow visiting journalists to interview the Ukrainians. French officers involved in the training said the troops are now better prepared for combat that they'll likely experience in months ahead. They have improved a lot, said Colonel Paul. The French military withheld his last name, citing security reasons. Now they are able to fight, they are able to maneuver, he said. They are able to use the different specialists and to use the different equipment they will have on the battlefield. Uh en Afghanistan, on a cette expérience-là, on a l'expérience du combat, euh, mais sur quelque chose un peu corps expéditionnaire, ce qu'on appelle dans notre jargon les opérations extérieures. Donc on a cette expérience-là, on n'a pas l'expérience euh, d'un combat euh, à parité, donc de, deux, euh, de, de, de la guerre, euh, de la guerre de deux, deux armées constituées, euh, équipées avec du matériel moderne, euh, ça nous on le redécouvre avec eux. A group of North Korean defectors handed Ukrainian officials propaganda leaflets urging Pyongyang's fighters to abandon the fight against Ukrainian troops in Russia, according to Newsweek. The collection of former North Korean residents delivered the material which includes written instructions and audio messages for North Korean fighters on how to defect to Ukraine's embassy in Seoul, South Korea's Yonhap news agency reported. Jang Seyul, heading up the group, says Kyiv's military could secure mass surrender and defection among North Korean soldiers if proactive psychological warfare is mobilized, according to the news agency. There had been small-scale clashes so far between Ukrainian and North Korean troops, Umerov said in an interview with South Korean media published earlier this month, but that Ukraine could not yet verify how many casualties North Korea had sustained or how many soldiers had become prisoners of war. 
An unnamed Ukrainian official told the New York Times on November the 5th that the engagements involving North Korean troops were limited, probably intended to test Ukraine's lines for weak points. Pyongyang's troops joined Russia's 810th Separate Naval Infantry Brigade, the official said. The US official told the Times a significant number of North Korean troops were killed, but did not specify further. Intelligence from Washington, Seoul and Kyiv has indicated the North Korean soldiers are dressed in Russian military uniforms. The first battles with North Korean soldiers open a new page of instability in the world, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said last week. North Korean troops are conditioned with unwavering loyalty to the leadership and a unique psychological resilience cultivated by the regime, designed to fit a sense of absolute sacrifice for the state into Pyongyang's personnel. Ji Hyun Park, a North Korean defector, now a senior fellow for human security at the Center for Asia-Pacific Strategy, previously told Newsweek. However, this psychological preparation may not translate effectively into practical resilience in the type of active combat scenarios currently seen in Ukraine, where they would face modernized and highly capable opposition in unfamiliar territory, Park said. North Korea may also face morale, desertion and defection problems if its troops start sustaining casualty figures approaching those Russian fighters are experiencing. Andrew Yeo, a senior fellow with the Washington-based Brookings Institution Center for Asia Policy Studies, recently told Newsweek. A Ukrainian government-backed hotline designed for Russian soldiers wishing to surrender as prisoners of war published an appeal last month to North Korean soldiers urging them to not die senselessly on foreign soil. The message was published in Korean. Ukrainian media reported in mid-October that 18 North Korean soldiers had already deserted close to the border with Ukraine, citing anonymous intelligence officials. Certain politicians in the European Union appear to be intent on triggering a full-blown war with Russia on their territory, former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev claimed. The comments came after German lawmaker Friedrich Merz, leader of the Christian Democratic Union and a contender to become the next chancellor, said he would back an ultimatum to Russia in which Ukraine would threaten to use long-range Western-supplied missiles unless Moscow agreed to a ceasefire. Merz stated that the delivery of Taurus would be anything but joining the conflict. The politician then claimed that deterrence has always been a threat and it is a potential aggressor that must be afraid of us. If we in the West are afraid to defend ourselves, then Putin has already won this war against us all by half. Merz argued, Scholz is obviously afraid and fear is a bad advisor, he said, adding that this was not just opinion but rather a conviction. Scholz has argued that such a move would make Germany a direct participant in the Ukraine conflict. In contrast, Merz has said that if elected chancellor, he intends to use the Kyiv requested weaponry as leverage with Moscow. He would deliver missiles within a week if Russia rejected Ukrainian demands, he told the Stern magazine in an interview last week. Responding on Tuesday, Medvedev argued that the missiles would not change the course of the conflict but instead would increase by several times the risk of the conflict entering the most dangerous phase. Generally speaking, it is surprising how eager the current generation of European politicians are in inviting war to their territory, notably to the obvious delight of the Americans and against the wishes of their own peoples, added Medvedev, who currently serves as deputy chair of the Russian Security Council. Inflated egos have replaced the wisdom and experience that European politicians used to show, he claimed. Recall earlier this month, the German ruling coalition collapsed amid disagreements between member parties on future government spending. Scholz has called for a parliamentary vote of confidence in January. Depending on the outcome, he would either lead a minority government or call a snap general election.